Happy Friday, everybody. Drizzy Drake is in the building, and you know we've got you got to set you up right for week 11. We've got some games to go over. Last night, we had a big one with Carolina and Pitt. The Coastal is looking a little clearer, or maybe it's not. We'll have that conversation today, but also some basketball talk. Got some big games from some of our ACC studs this weekend. We'll go on. We'll go over all of that on today's show. Let's bring Jersey Drake on the stage. Here we go. <laughs> On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of Locked On ACC. This episode is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family from the community can come together. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. Honestly, I'm loving it. Jersey Drake, what's going on, man? It's good. It's good. Today is Friday. I'm excited heading into the weekend. It's going to my voice a little bit gone. I was at the Dolphins Ravens game last night with a few friends of mine that came down from Baltimore. Unfortunately, the Ravens did not get a dub, but it was a great time. Regardless. How are you doing, Candace? Are you a Ravens fan? No, okay. I'm actually a Steelers fan. Oh, OK. But I went, but I went to Baltimore with, uh, with a few of my good friends, you know, for law school. Okay. Was there, for, there for four years and I despise the Dolphins. I'm not a Dolphins fan at all whatsoever, but like I gotcha. can discuss that later date, even though I'm from down here. But but no, how, how are you feeling after the game last night? You know, I'm good. Honestly, I'm glad we just got it over with. I feel like the, the clouds came out during overtime. The floor dropped to all the rain that it could possibly come down for Carolina, which is very on brand for their season. It was just a whole lot of stress. And just listen, if you can't get a first down in the first quarter until you've got about one minute left, you should know it's going to be a long day for you and your squad. And that's exactly what it is. If you haven't noticed uh, by now, we were talking about the Carolina Pittsburgh game that happened on Thursday night lights for the ACC Pittsburgh playing at home, needing a big win to secure their role being a top of the coastal. And they definitely had everything rolling for them to start. We're up 17 points. You know, they just kept rolling. It looked like they were out of it. Looked like they were putting it away. And then Carolina decided, okay, we're going to step up offense in the second half and try and get back into this game. Ended up tying the game, going into overtime. But unfortunately, after Pittsburgh went on offense first, scored a touchdown, the rain and the skies just truly opened up. And Carolina was unable to convert on fourth and 11, and the game was over. And so were Carolina's hopes of winning or being a part of the Coastal and ACC Championship. Well, I mean, not only y'all's, but Miami's are pretty much done too because Pitt did win that game. I mean, I mean, Kenny Pickett still, you know, has been putting on a show all year. I think at three hundred forty yards, three TDs. Sam Howell, not his best effort, but he still kept them in the game. I mean, you guys did force OT, which is something that a lot of people I think didn't think was going to happen with this Pitt football team. But overall, I mean, it's just what do you think actually was the crux of like why you guys you know lost that game overall? Did you watch any of it? I watched a bit this morning. Okay, you saw the offensive line. Let me tell you, they got swallowed up like it was their job. Literally nobody was blocked. They couldn't block a blessing, okay? It was absolutely horrendous. It was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, do you actually want Sam Howell to get hurt? Because five sacks in the first half, you were on pace to give 10 sacks in the game. Who's not getting cussed out enough? Like, who is not getting yelled at <laughs> enough? I do not understand. Get, and then on top of that, you get on the goal line to go up. You were down 20 to 23, right? You could have scored a freaking touchdown. And you get a false start from your offensive lineman, uh, Josh Azudu. And, I mean, you're not a freshman. You're not new to this. You're not new to how intense games go. You just played one. Like, I'm not understanding the logic here. You get a false start. You got moved back. Now you have to go for the kick. Game is tied. Instead of going for the win, like you could do, you had to go for a tie. And then statistically, third quarter, they absolutely had opportunities to just stay in the game, be with the field goal. They decided to go for points, go down for fourth and short. If your offensive line has been stinking it up the entire time, why would you, one, try and go for it? Number two, on fourth and one, you decide to pitch it out to, like, do a long ball to Olsen. 
Yeah, okay. You see? You see where I'm having? You decide to throw it to Olsen, who has not made but three damn catches the entire season? You decided to air it out to him? Are you crazy? Are you? And I can't, I'm not even mad at the kids. They can only run what the coach tell them to do at the end of the day. Like all, you got to run the play. Bateman needs a new job. Longo needs a new job. I mean, are they hiring the G5? Like, are they, do they need a head coach? I think Longo would be better served. Okay. Does Bateman want to go return back to the uh, services? Go on, do it. Okay. I'm I'm tired. <laughs> I'm over it. They piss me off. You see the accent starting to get a little more country. Somebody come coming, come on down. This wasn't even supposed to be the whole segment, but I need to let this out because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of watching Carolina be on paper an extremely talented team and not be able to deliver. Don't hype me up for nothing. Do not say nothing else hype. Nobody going to do no Heisman. I don't want to hear about no Davey O'Brien. I don't want to hear about nothing. Don't tell me nothing about anybody else on nobody's preseason All-American. Nothing. I don't care. I don't care. See, folks, I'm not laughing at her because of her situation. <laughs> One, I think it's hilarious. And sometimes you just need to like let out your brothers and vent out. She doesn't get to do that often. So I just love hearing it. But two, also, I'm laughing because this is exactly what's been my problem with my football team for the past two years. When yeah. you said specifically that when you don't get your first first down <laughs> until the end of the first quarter, I'm like, oh, God, no, she's going to my territory right now. And that's a dark <laughs> place to be right now. And then you're talking about your offensive line being poor. I'm like, oh, no. Oh no! Oh it no! It was no, literally no, no. on brand. <laughs> it was. Not it was like Mike Norvell decided, "Hey, I'm going to trade places because at, at least he figured it out against UNC, and I can't even sit here and say, all right, at least we took down FSU this season.' Twice. So many ga- five games, five freaking games that you cannot sit here and tell me Carolina was the worst team or definitely should have you know not been in the game. Like to me, it's just so aggravating because it's one thing if we suck. I can make peace with sucking. I can be a cool, like no, no tea, no shade. I could be a Duke, right? I know where my team is at. I know the energy. Like we just, that's just not our praise, right? But if you're going to sit here and hype me up, deliver. That's all I'm saying. Hype me up and deliver. Yeah, so this is the respect that Mac Brown's been asking for for the past, like, well, I, like him That's and Dave, Dave Dorn. Doing the same thing. Yeah, Dave Dorn with the same damn Mac thing. Mac Brown says don't abandon it. I'm not abandoning. I just don't. I have no feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't abandon. Like, we're ride or die. I wore my Carolina sweatshirt to practice this morning, but I'm just, I can't. I can't give you more than I'm, I'm giving. I can't. No more. No, I mean, that's fair. But, I mean, we'll say you did go up against the best QB in the ACC, to be fair, in your defense. I know I know you don't want to hear that, but sometimes, you know, when your team is, you know, this lackluster and this underperforming expectations, sometimes you need to temper a little bit. Trust me. because They I'm had right 34 and 45 yards in the third and fourth quarters. I'm not trying to hear it. They clearly figured out on defense how to shut the man down. So what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what was your offensive line doing in the third and fourth quarter? Like, no, sir. What were y'all doing in the first? Y'all cannot, y'all, y'all held Kenny Pickett to field goal. That's you held Kenny Pickett to having to punt because he got a little brass and thought I was gonna go for it on fourth and short. And defensive stood their ground. And you mean to tell me you can't capitalize on that? Go somewhere. Go somewhere. See, you ruined the whole segment with me having me vent. Damn it. Jersey Drake, this was not what we were supposed to be talking about in this first one, but you just you knew I needed that. I appreciate it. Yeah, sometimes sometimes trust me, trust me. You knew me, I needed that. You needed that. <laughs> Max lets me do that. I let Max do that. Dave, our other co-host, he does the same damn thing. Sometimes you just need to get out for test because like you you like blowing up, like you, you just need to get it out. You just need to get it out. I had to get it out. All right. Well, we're actually gonna talk about the rest of the teams here because I feel like it's only fair. But I'm glad now that I've let that explode. I'm you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my little tail to McDonald's and get myself a McFlurry with some Oreos, even though Jersey Jack like his own little combo. We can talk about that later. But oh, I'm gonna make sure <laughs> I hit up McDonald's because it has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where my friends and I can go and vent about hard games and tough conversations about my Tar Heels. Now, win or lose, it's definitely somewhere that I still enjoy to get myself recharged and refueled. Again, McFlurries are the jam, but if you want to get a little crazy, throw a little sweet and salty in there, try some fries in there. I won't even hold you. It can definitely be a delicious treat. So you can head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect today. Tag me. Let me know what you get in your food on your menu items, and we can just keep the conversation rolling because at the end of the day, it's all about uniting together and making sure that we're loving it. Drizzy Drake in the building, and of course, it's week 11. Now that I am done venting, we can go over some better games that are happening this weekend for the rest of the teams in the ACC and some betting action that we'll see probably if you want to win some money. I think there's some good ones to go down. UConn and Clemson, bet the house. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bet oh, the man. house, Jersey Drake. I don't know about you, but a one and eight UConn team. Okay, and Clemson, who is currently six and three and definitely still knocking on the door for being in the Atlantic, certainly will have a lackluster. Maybe we'll see some of the young guys get some burn, even though they pretty much have already this season, you know, step up in big ways. And of course, this will be the game. DJ, you know, lights it up. He's not lighting it up. I think that <laughs> ship has sailed since a few weeks ago. He he should have lighted it up against us. And like, okay. I think so far, we've been the best game I think he's played, I think. Yeah. Louisville, he. He closes that pretty well, but overall he didn't really, you know, light that up. And then, but UConn, I mean, UConn is probably the worst team in the FBS right now, and mm-hmm. that includes UMass. And actually, ironically, I think UConn actually was a, was like a competitive-ish team when they had uh, Tyson Fomacon, uh, the Clemson backup quarterback, little brother was starting there, but then he got injured. So Clemson, to me, should win this game by sixty points. I think the spread right now is forty-one. I like, like you said, I would put my entire mortgage on minus forty-one for Clemson, even though they don't cover. Like that's something you should be doing. So give me Clemson minus forty one because Clemson they they just need to like show something of being a dominant team mm-hmm. somehow some way. I don't give a if I, if I'm a Clemson fan, I don't give a damn if it's UConn, if it's Bishop Gorman, or if it's IMG, or if it's DeVry. You need to do something on this level right now. Yes, DeVry. All right, but next noon game that we have two teams battling for a chance to go to a bowl game. Syracuse and Louisville both still have opportunities to be bowl eligible this season. Now, Louisville absolutely should have beat Clemson. I don't care what nobody yes. said. That was all mm-hmm. them. They let that game get away from the last four minutes. Fine. But Syracuse also, they've had some pre- good, pretty good games this year. They probably should have beat Clemson if we're keeping it in a ban. But how are these two going to come together? And what is this matchup going to look like? Because I feel like it's going to be Louisville heavy. I think it's going to be Syracuse. Really? Okay. So reportedly what's going on with Satterfield, his seat is a lot harder than a lot of people, more people expect to come into the year. Huh. Some people are actually still salty about the South Carolina stuff from last year where he kind of like didn't lie about going for another job. And I was like, well, you could just lie to our face. I mean, we would much prefer than saying, like, you know, hey, I went over here, you know, like, behind, like, you know, behind your back, but I'm being upfront about it. It's kind of rude. But also, like, if you see, like, the Boston College game, I mean, they beat them, but they beat them with Dennis Grossell. Mm-hmm. And then with the NC State game, that game was something that they just did not look good whatsoever. And then Clemson. That game right there is like significant of a team where that they kind of gave up a little bit at the end of the at the end of the day. So apparently it's not only the staff or boosters that are you know losing faith in Satterfield, but it's also players as well. Like there's already apparently some quit in that locker room. And with plus three with Dino, Dino the players actually like the guy a lot. They're actually yeah. playing really well for him. And he like I said before the season started, if you if he gets six wins, he keeps his job. And I think a lot of people want to see Dino win this game. And plus three to me. That's juicy right there. So give me Syracuse plus three. Give me Syracuse money line. And give me the under two because I think that's a game that's going to be very close. Molly Cunningham is still that boy. He's still that dude. He's still really damn good. But I have Syracuse win this game outright. You know, Dino Babers loves that plus three. Anything with three in it, he is all about it. Hopefully he'll be on the winning side of a three point game and so yeah I can roll with that you know I'm always always here to support Dino then we move on to 330 Miami playing Florida State the one that everyone (laughs) circles and knows that it doesn't matter what's on the schedule you better sack up and show up for this one right here let's ruin Miami season even more oh yeah I hate that school what's the old Tupac (laughs) saying you know uh they uh from hit him up before we talk about bad boy like was it like f uh yeah whatever I'm not gonna say that on air for this for Miami. first off in the quick you claim, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and the, as a as a what is it, as a set as a crew as a mother, as a label and all that stuff. Yeah, that's how I feel about Miami, folks. I'm not going to say it on here. Here, just listen to the song. No, because this is a game that a lot of the kids when they were recruited were they play each other from like five from Pop Warner, middle school, high school, and then college they go the separate ways, right? So it's like a very personal game for these people too. And not only that too, like, this is a game that in the eighties and nineties, whoever won this game was going to play for a national championship. Mm-hmm. And in recent years, it hasn't felt that way at all. We won seven games in a row. I would, while I was there, it was five. I was there for five years, folks. So it took a little bit of victory lap at the school. The past four years have been very depressing. It's like the, it's like the Colin Kaepernick meme. I've been denied for three, four years. I've tried for four years. But this yeah. is a game to me that Mike Norvell has to win. Yeah, It's extremely important because this is a Miami team that I know Tyler Van Dyke has played extremely well. And I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I'm scared for him to develop next year. He's going to be a very good quarterback. I think mm-hmm. they actually found something in him. Same thing with Jalen Knighton. But this is a Miami defense where Mandy Diaz, that's his calling card, that defense is terrible. They're dead last in tackling. Also, that offensive line has given up the most sacks in the ACC. 
the most quarterback heard in the ACC. And our defensive line, led by Jermaine Johnson, Kier Thomas, Fabian Levin, Robert Cooper, should be getting home, make him uncomfortable. I'm never taking Miami to BS ever. You don't even like, that's not even a betting pick. I'm like, if you want to take Miami, go right ahead. But Period. Okay. I, but no, I can't do that. Give me FSU plus two and a half. Give me the money line too. We are going to we're going to beat them by ten to fifteen points. I think this is the, we're the best defense that that team has played since Michigan State, and we okay. we have a we have a similar stable of backs with Jason Corbin and Trayshawn Ward, and Jordan Travis is actually back from his flu bug. We're going to run all over them. We're going to beat them by 10, 14 points. I don't give a damn. I love the energy, and I can't wait to talk about this next Friday. Probably got to talk about it with Monday with Kenton because he's going to say, of course, two to three things, positive or negative about either side. But again, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Miami essentially out of it in this coastal race is between Pittsburgh and Virginia at this point, thanks to that Pitt win. Pitt just ruined it for everybody. Even my guy who listens to the show said he was rooting for Carolina. I said, you might want to stop. Just don't do it. And so he switched gears, and he started rooting against us, and then we started doing better. Like, obviously, you did not cheer hard enough. Enough, you know, for Pitt and that bad boy, they ended up coming out. So who do, who knows? But thank you so much for the support, as always. Then we got Boston College and Georgia Tech. Boston College looking to be bowl eligible, five and four season right now. Could very much beat a Georgia Tech team. And to me, it says a lot about Coach Halfley. And despite the fact that he hadn't had Dracovic the entire season, still able to pull out enough wins, right? Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that, and and especially with Dan Grossell, who is. He was good. He, he was serviceable the he first two weeks. He did what he needed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, like, I think I've been using this 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 analogy a lot. He turned to a pumpkin like Cinderella. It just he, yeah. he he ain't that guy. And then Big Phil out of nowhere from like the damn sky, like just like comes in and saves the day against Virginia Tech, where they lost Burmeister. I do know that. Or trust me, I watched the game with the sports in the Bahamas, but he didn't play particularly great. But I think he did mm-hmm. just enough, and he showed how limited he was. And I don't think you need to be that good to be the Georgia Tech team. Because this Georgia Tech team, to me, has been very disappointing. I thought they're going to be a lot better. I think AJ was the same thing. I think I had them. I also had them as you know they might be a, they might be sneaky with Jameer Gibbs and Jeff Sims, and they just haven't done that. And their defense is just bad. Their defense is really, really bad. So yeah. to me, this is a game. Boston College. I don't know why they're the underdog here. Georgia Tech should not be a favorite against anybody at all. <laughs> Period. Well, so, you know, I think Georgia Tech's defense is extremely inconsistent, but they do have the dogs and they have the horses in the stable to be solid. They just cannot mm-hmm. pull it off every single game, night in, night out. And then Jameer Gibbs and Jeff Sims, they're extremely young and they're finding out the hard way that this is a long season. This is a hard grind and you're going to have to dish out, you know, highlight real type performances every single week. You can't just take a week off or your lines can't just decide, oh, we're not going to battle in the trenches. And I think that's a little bit of what we're seeing here with the Yellow Jackets. I can agree with that. The problem is, like, I've seen that before with my own football team, I think, a few years ago. When I think it was Taggart's first year, when we had a Brian Burns, a Cam Akers, a Stanford Samuels, LaVonta Taylor, you have the dogs. Mm-hmm. You just need, you can't have just one good play. You need to consistently have the over, consi- like over every single series, whether it be offense or defense. And that to mm-hmm. me is right now where the Georgia Tech team is. And I see a lot of shades of that, shades of that team in Georgia GT, not the quitting part, not the, uh, the lack of effort or discipline that we saw a lot, but it's more that they just can't string stuff together at all. Yeah. And that's going to be the problem against a very, well disciplined, well coached team with Jeff Halfley in Boston College. So I'm taking Boston College to win this game outright. I agree. And listen, I think the Duke Georgia Tech game was when it kind of changed for both programs because one, Duke should have absolutely won that game, would have got a conference win and things might have shifted. But when Georgia Tech barely beat them, I feel like they got a little too overconfident. It's like, bros, it's Duke. Like, you shouldn't be feeling yourselves this much after this win. And yet, and still, here they were. But I me, mean, that's neither here nor there you know, figuring it out. I want to go over the last three games. want to make sure we get those in because I'm sure some of those fans obviously want us to talk about the biggest game of the weekend. We all know it clearly is going to be Duke and Virginia Tech. Ha, jokes, all <laughs> jokes. But we're back and better than ever with a new web interface for the state of start of college basketball. And if you guys have not yet, please make sure that you head to Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all sports action. It remains your number one spot for all of the coverage, updates, offers, betting. You got it. You name it, they've got it. Head to the new website, sign up today, and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using promo code LOCKED. On they have got boxing UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino game, so don't wait to take advantage 
Bet online is where the game starts. And once you're done there, you can grab a quick snack on your on the way to your next football or basketball game. Even if you want to do a little football, I mean volleyball, field hockey, whatever sport you choose. Make sure you're well equipped and you're well nourished with Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Most protein bars are chalky or waxy or just plain hard to eat. A Built Bar is soft, covered in 100% real chocolate, and when you bite into it, it feels like you're eating something different, almost like a candy bar. They have all the low-calorie, low-carb things that you need, and especially they're high in protein. And the great thing about Built Bar, there are so many flavors up to nine, and every so often they have some limited time additions. So be sure to check the website often by going to built.com using promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's built.com to get 15% off using promo code LOCKED15. Wrapping up today's show, and of course, we want to go over these three games here. Don't want to leave you out of this. Georgia Tech and Duke are battling in Virginia Tech, looking to try and stay into that bowl eligibility conversation. It's going to be rough, but they're sitting currently at four and five. Then we have Duke, who is three and six, still in search of their first conference win. And let's not play like they cannot to get it against the Hokies. It's a po- it's possible. They can move the ball. They, score, they put up 29 against Pitt, uh, the team that you said had the best quarterback in the damn league. So I'm just saying, but I'm saying. I mean, didn't AJ say that was it the offensive lineman knew a bunch of the play calls? <sighs> Technicality. That's what Narduzzi accused. I even asked Locked on Pitt host Nick Farabaugh if that was the case. And it was all alleged. We don't know for sure. I'm just saying, as someone that played catcher for a long time, and I knew we were going to be a certain pitcher, I knew exactly what he had little tips where he's like throwing some off speed stuff, stuff like that. And I would tell my teammates. I'm just, and it does make a huge difference. But I will say that Duke. Here's the thing with Duke. They're just not. Good. Not a deep breath. I'm trying. I'm trying to, I'm, you know what's coming with it when I do that. I'm just trying to like. I want Cut to get one more last ACC conference one. I just don't. Think he, I think he missed a shot a few weeks ago. I think this is a VT team that their defense is pretty damn good. I mean, Braxton Burmaster though is he is he coming back in this game? I'm not sure. I think he's probably going to be one of those uh, game time decisions as well. So like that because is that I don't even know who their backup is, but like it, I'm not going to lie to you, if he's back up to Braxton Burmeister, that means he's not. He may not be much better, and you know how we've all slandered the man, the poor kid. On this program. Well, I think Coach Fuente that. is very ego driven, and Burmeister is his guy. And after getting rid of him and Hooker, you have to have Burmeister. You have, yeah, you have to have Burmeister be the man, period, because you went so hard to pay for him. That's how ego, that's, that's all ego. That's how like Max, I think, feels about uh, Mackenzie Milton with Jordan Travis, because I don't know why he stuck with him that long when he was that bad. And I kind of, I, I can see that a lot, actually. So I'm not taking Duke to win this game. I know they have the horses with a uh, Mateo Durant. Gunnar Holmberg, I'm pretty sure, didn't get her last game. I think Luca Diamante is coming also. To play that, and I he, think he's not that much of an improvement. He might be kind of a downgrade. Riley Leonard, Leonard is not that bad, though. Hmm. <laughs> That's the first time I heard the last name. I ain't, I ain't gonna front, but no, I, I mean they do got Jake Bobo. I know he was a semifinalist for some, I think, some award this past year too. So I'm gonna go Virginia Tech though. With you know, I'm, it may not be Braxton Burmeister, but I think Fuente, he might, he is coaching for his job. He kind of has to beat Duke at this point because if he doesn't, whoo. I mean, we've been oh, saying that he doesn't beat Duke. Yeah, he's done. he's done. Especially in the season Duke is having. Nah, bro, you can't. You if, can't yeah, if you're the first conference win for that man, whoo, you were going to be week, in week. week eleven. God, dog. Yeah, no, that's that would be absolutely rough. Okay, so then we have Notre Dame playing Virginia. Virginia, a team that clearly Notre Dame is not an ACC opponent, but it would be nice to have it on the belt to take down Notre Dame. As always, we all love you know beating the Fighting Irish from the football standpoint. Cavaliers, do they have a shot? It depends on Brandon, Brandon Armstrong who plays this game. Facts. And I think it's like a hamstring injury or something with his leg, which is kind of limiting it's for rib. him. Oh, it's his rib. Mm-hmm. So that actually makes it kind of worse for me, primarily oh, because, for sure. because I, I mean, I heard my ribs as a catcher and throwing that ball was just terrible. I can't even imagine doing that for football. So if he plays this game, I think they have a decent shot primarily because like Notre Dame, I don't think it's a good football team. I think they're, they're a paper tiger. They are probably the worst top 10 team I think I've ever seen. Jack Cohn's not a good QB. Their defense is very solid. I think Kyle Hamilton is the best safety in the country. I don't think anyone can yeah. argue against that. And then Kyle Williams is very good. The problem is Virginia's run defense is really bad. And I am kind of scared to see 
because we saw against UNC how Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree played against y'all. And mm-hmm. they can do, I think, even worse things to Virginia's defense. So yeah. I might take Virgi- uh, Notre Dame to win this game, but I kind of have a feeling that Virginia might be able to cover. Well, we got one more. And, of course, it's the one, allegedly, for some people. Notre, Notre Dame. NC State and uh, that team down there in Winston-Salem, Wake Forest, is playing prime time, 730. And this is the Atlantic Division Championship game right here. Pretty much. And you're yeah. feeling like the winner is going to be who, Jersey Drake? Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be NC State. And I okay. primarily say that because – one, Wake let me down. I had a huge parlay on them in the Bahamas, and they I had the money line, and I'm so salty about that. I'm so I could have told, told you that. I could have told you that. I know. There's those, I feel like those damn nerds. I'm just shaking my fist like in revenge on the nerds. But, no, with NC State, they they played a Florida State team the week before who was out 20 to 25 personnel. And also they played a Florida State team that majority of the people that played didn't practice till freaking Thursday or Friday. So, to me, they're going to be a lot more well-rested where Wake played – 55 points is a lot for both your offense and your defense to go through. And then you do a weak turnaround against an NC State team who, Corey Dern, that man's bad. That man that man came in, came in our trap, took our trap. You know, I don't forget how, you, how you're saying that real quick. But no, he, that is, yeah. he did that. And that defense is nothing to joke around about. And also, Devin Leary, he's going to shred that, that offense. I mean, sorry, he's going to shred that defense. And I am actually kind of excited to see that. I like Wake a lot, but I think this is the point where it's too big for Wake now. I think they might have hit their ceiling last week. And like they're losing to a uh, mediocre, no offense, UNC team that kind of shows cases, you know, who they really are. Offense. Take all the uh, – listen, <laughs> they deserve. They deserve everything you're saying. But, no, in serious talk, I do think I'll be there on a Saturday in Winston-Salem. I'm excited to see what these teams are going to do. I think it's going to be a great matchup head-to-head. Having NC State play – at Wake Forest, I think that's going to be a little bit spicier than what people think because many times, even Kenton was saying on Locked and Wolfpack how they usually play and it's like dead silent because no fans show up. Like This is not going to be the case. I think there's like 100 tickets left for this game, which is like usually not the case for Wake Forest football. Students came out in droves for their homecoming matchup, so we'll see. Yeah, I saw. It. I think it was like they said, like eighty-five percent of the student section was like filled, and then like I think another every faculty member, staff, athletics were all there. So it was like almost like ninety-five percent of the actually the entire Wake Forest like population was at the game. I think if you mm-hmm. mm-hmm. which is dope. That's actually pretty cool. That actually you can see a team people get behind a team like that. But I just think NC State they they kind of had a tune up against us, and yeah. I think they were able to rest up some people. They didn't. Like, if you just look at the play calling, they kind of kept us in that game, and not, it wasn't because of you know. Bad play combos. It was more like, we're going to rest up. We're not going to try super, super hard. We're not going to give our full 10% because you all have Mackenzie Mill in the quarterback and also you don't, you're don't, you not playing most of your starters. And that's kind of why I look at our game like, yeah, I mean, we lost, but it just sucks as anything else. But with NC State, I think that's definitely be a game for them to, to take back the lead in the Atlantic. No doubt. And wrapping up here, of course, make sure you guys bet on all of these various games with betonline.ag. But if you're not into football, maybe you like some basketball action. One of the biggest games we have for the ACC this weekend, Florida State. So glad to have my Locked on Seminoles host here. And Florida playing each other. So I think that's similar to the Duke-Kentucky matchup, right? Still a very good primetime in your face. Let's talk about where our conference is as a whole with some of these big games out the gate. How are you feeling about this FSU Florida? matchup oh i feel great because <laughs> coach coach ham owns coach mike white coach mike white's the head coach <laughs> of the university of florida gators and i will say though last year that game actually scared me a lot more because of keontae johnson i thought keontae johnson was going to be a first round pick he was that damn good and unfortunately he had the incident that happened at the court and right. he's not on his team anymore but i will say there one thing that does scare me with the florida gators is colin Castleton. Mm. that kid's kind of got that kp the chris s porzingis who before he you know became a bum and went to the mavs he, he's kind of like a unicorn. He's got a great shot, great post-up moves, and he kind of spaces the floor really well. And Florida has, I think, three separate transfers, one of them being a Boston College kid. His name is escaping me. But I'm not super worried about it, primarily because I think this FSU team is built differently this year. And that's primarily because we actually finally have a true point guard now. Last year, I love Scotty Barnes to death. That's sky too high. That's my boy. But we have Caleb Mills, a Houston transfer, who, if you watch the Penn game, we beat them by almost 40. And mm-hmm. we finally have a true point guard leading the attack, leading, slashing the basket. And he usually what I saw with a lot of uh, point guards like drive to the basket, they go for the foul. 
Now, my man fought through and still got the foul, but still fought through to get the points. And we have Anthony Polite, Malik Osborne, who I call the Garnet Goblin because, you know, the last name is Osborne, a Marvel guy here over here. So to <laughs> me, I'm actually, I'm not super worried, but it's going to be a closer game than I think fans expect. Uh, I'm, I can see FSU. I think the line is going to open up around three and a half. I think that's probably where it's going to be around. So just give me Florida State to win that by probably five points. It's going to be kind of like that, but it's going to be a good game to watch. It's probably going to be the best game actually on Sunday. No doubt. And that'll be Sunday at 1 p.m. on ESPN. So y'all be sure to check that out and support the conference, right? So Jersey Drake has to get out of here, but we have to let people know where they can find you, follow your work. You can follow me at Tally underscore underscore Drake. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Seminoles. You can follow my co-host at Max Moody 17. And also we have at Knowles Anonymous. That's our community where we have our Discord. We, you know, answer fan questions. We're fans first, people second, content creators third, and all as always. Hashtag FMFFM. If, if you're a Florida State fan, you know what that means. If you're not, folks, you can Google that real quick. Oh, my Lord. I can only imagine what that means. But, you guys, I want you to have a great and safe weekend. Make sure you take some time to vent. Let it all out if you need to. Just enjoy the sunshine if you got it. Enjoy the, maybe the cold weather if it's starting to come your way. And all in all, make sure you come back on Monday as we recap not only – football but basketball the seasons are starting to mix and so we want to make sure we have coverage all around we'll give you those top stories over the weekend until next time for candace cooper and jizzy drake